Our next guest has two Michelin stars, four Bib Gourmands. He made Time's 100 Most Influential People list two times and was nominated for a Nobel Prize. He also has a book. It's called Feeding Dangerously on the Ground with Jose Andres and World Central Kitchen. It comes out Wednesday. Please welcome Chef Jose Andres. <laughs> You mean, they know I'm not cooking? They don't know, they don't know. Maybe don't tell them at the top, you should have saved that for the end, yeah, but. They're too excited, hi. <laughs> well, I know well, you do a lot of cooking, you do a lot of things. I'm a, I really am a great admirer of you and your work. Uh, I'm surprised I don't know you, you to be You're a great admirer, you. that's why it took 20 years for you to invite me to your show. <laughs> 20 years, people! I think your uh, charity is fantastic and what you do is fantastic. And it is, it's all here, the whole story about you and the places that you visited and the people you've helped is here in this graphic novel. Why did you decide to make it a graphic novel? Okay, this was never my idea. Uh -huh. This is Steve Orlando. Okay. Who he is like the Messi, the Magic Johnson of comic books. Mm -hmm. Oh. And one day he, you know, through social media, Hi, I'm Steve Orlando. Hi, I'm Jose Andres. <laughs> Jose, I want to tell the story of what Walt Central Kitchen does. And uh, I write comics, and oh, shit, I love comics. Uh -huh. I, I mean, I, I'm a comic guy, a manga guy. I want to be in a comic. And I'm like, let's do it. And so and we began you... working five years ago, and I cannot believe he put my name next to him and Alberto Porticelli, the amazing guy that did all the drawings. And not only did Alberto draw you, he made you look like a real badass superhero uh, yeah. making paella there. Yeah. yeah. But Jimmy. That's serious. This book is, is far away more than, than, than me. I, I just came back from Acapulco. It was there two days ago. Mm -hmm. Almost a million people. Without water, without electricity, without food. This is a book that tells the stories of the people that when others are moving away from disaster, we have amazing individuals that move into the disaster to help people. In the worst moments of humanity, the best of humanity always shows up. In this comic book, you're gonna see many people that went to help people. Real superheroes. To yes. me, the people that moved the world. Yeah. That book is gonna tell you what World Central Kitchen does, and it's gonna open a door into fascinating people that they decide where there is no food, no water, they make magic happen, literally. Many, many times people tell me, Jose, guys, where do you find the food? In the supermarkets? Where do you find the kitchens? In the restaurants? And everybody's like, wow. <laughs> what we do is nothing special. What we do is that we have people that they say, we are here to help the people in the moment that they need us the most. That's what this book is telling. What a great thing, and what a different thing to do. Because I think when you, um, and correct me if I'm wrong, when you decide I want to be a chef, I want to feed people, you sometimes wind up in these situations where it becomes very exclusive, very particular to people who are wealthy, who can get a reservation, who are in some way VIPs, and then you just make this change in your life where you've decided to go to Haiti and go to earthquakes and wars and Palestine, Israel, et cetera, and feed the people there on the ground. And that is the essence, I think, of a chef. You, you know, everybody can cook. You can cook? I do, yeah, I cook, yeah. Are you a good cook? I'm pretty good. Guillermo, is he a good cook? Yeah, he is very good. Uh, yeah. Yes. I promise you. Yeah, that. you don't he... want to be fired. Yeah, I get it. <laughs> no, no, I get it. I, I swear to God, he's a great cook. I... But uh, people, uh, any cook, you have the power to feed the few. Any one of you, whatever is your profession, you have the power to do something for the few. But if you think about it, if you dream about it, you have the same power, in the case of cooks, to feed the many. So it didn't take much. We went to Haiti the first time was an earthquake, and we began cooking. We, we began learning. But I always realized that we all have the power to move the needle. If we can help somebody on our left, on our right, 
is just worth the effort. Coming back from Acapulco, I cannot wait to go back. Why? Because I go there, but I, I am filled with energy, mm. with goodness, with empathy. That's why people, we need to be always next to the people in our darkest hour, because we have the power to make each other better. Yeah. Oh, that's great. You, um, yeah, no, it's really great what you do. I heard you're a, a big basketball fan, and did you meet Magic Johnson backstage? Yeah. You did, yeah. Are you, are you a Lakers <laughs> fan? I mean, you cannot miss him. I mean, like, right. yeah, I mean, the door was not very, very big, it was not wrong. We were like, hi, Magic, hi, Jose, and moving. I mean, I love Magic. Uh, listen, when I was young, I will have to escape in the middle of the night so my mom will not find out the first bar in Barcelona that had a satellite that we could watch the NBA playoff finals. I was probably 14th, 15th, and it would take me an hour to get to the bar. In the middle of the night, I was uh, a player. I scored one time 28 points. Oh, you did? Wow. When you played on your school team? Yeah. I was very happy. Well, we, uh, at my little town, we had, you know, an open basketball court and was the, the board uh, was wooden. You know, wooden? You yeah. understand my English? Yeah, wooden. Yeah. Wooden, wood. Yeah. Uh, and then was folded because the rain and was old. And so, the board was not flat, was oh, like... Oh, it was warped. Was warped. Yes, right. warped. Warped, yeah. Warped. Man, your English is Yeah, good. I know. I'm, you know, I've been here for years. <laughs> so, so it's warped. So we never lost the game at home because who, who the heck was going to score <laughs> with a warp? But we knew how to you do it. You knew the board, yeah, and, the and when I moved to LA, I opened a restaurant, and guess, I found a person that I love, Pau Gasol. Oh, yeah. Can you believe yeah. Pau Gasol's mother was the boss of my mother, in the same hospital. My mom was a nurse. Um, uh, wow. The mother of Pau also was a doctor. And, uh, and I guess that's why I play uh, basketball so well. Uh, <laughs> I'm trying to make connection. So when I met Pau here, for me, it was great. We became good friends. He came to my restaurant, the Bazaar, which we opened, we closed, and we are about to open next year. And he would come, and he would love Iberico Ham. You know Iberico Ham? Oh, yes, sure. He's like a good prosciutto. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I have no problems against <laughs> Italian people. <It's> only... <laughs> but then he, all the players will come. It's like a good I have a theory <laughs> that the Lakers won so many rings because all the players were eating Iberico ham. You think that's what, what it was? The ham? Because I have a proof. <laughs> I opened a restaurant in Miami and the year, a bazaar, and I served Iberico ham. And who won that year another NBA ring? The Miami Heat. Who was coming to eat in my restaurant? Iberico Ham? The, Maya, the Miami Heat players. I do really have something going on with Iberico. <laughs> <laughs> if you are, if you play in an NBA team and you want to win a ring, people have a Iberico Ham next to your bench. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's obvious. I like that idea. I think that's nice, you yeah. know? <laughs> you, yeah. um, uh, how should I put this? You claim, and correct me again if I have this wrong, that pizza was invented in Spain. No, no, hold on, hold on, hold on. This is fake news. People! Okay. This is fake news. This is... Uh, That's okay. what I was going to say, No, too. okay, this yeah. is, a, this is yeah. a show I have on CNN. Okay, yeah. Uh, which is Jose Andres and family in Spain. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and I think at one moment, after a few glasses of wine, maybe, I said that, yes, that pizza before Italy... In Spain, we had flatbread with tomato and with cheese. I mean, I mean, technically, the Italians stole pizza from the Mexicans. <laughs> they, they have tacos, they put tomato, and they put cheese. What the heck is this? <laughs> Italians took it away from the Mexicans, people. And where the tomatoes arrived first to Europe from Mexico? Spain. <laughs> what, what the first Italian cookbook with tomato sauce called tomato sauce? Spanish sauce. Obviously, yes. Or is the Mexicans with the tacos, tomato, and cheese, or were the Spanish? Sorry, pizza. Yeah, pizza is great, but I mean, ah, a taco is like a pizza, man. I mean, <laughs> I mean, you know what Mexicans need to be thinking about cutting the pizza in the squares? So I said that on national TV. I received a tweet from the Italian embassy in America. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Listen, I am an immigrant, okay? I yeah. was thinking, they can take, they can take my citizenship away <laughs> from me. 
maybe they know Donald Trump or something. I, I was l really worried for a second, but I, li I like. You're I still like here. You, you're able to stay. I like. I like pizza. Listen, any any person or dish that has two letters next to each other to emphasize pizza. You're for Jimmy that. Jimmy Kimmel. Oh yeah, I do have that. I mean, it's tasty. I mean, when I think about Jimmy Kimmel and I watch him at night, it's like, mmm, it's so many M's. It's so many M's. Mmm. This is the book. It's called Feeding Dangerously on the Ground with Jose Andres and World Central Kitchen. It comes out Wednesday. Thank you so much for being here. Jeff Jose Andres. We'll be right back with Jordan Davis.